Hello, this is the 11th and final part of our comparative Bible study on the events surrounding the Nativity of Jesus Christ. During this part, we'll discuss a brief episode during Jesus' early life. Overall, this is our 15th New Testament Bible study. I realize this Bible study on the early life of Jesus may be getting outside the title of this Bible study series because Nativity implies birth and we're beyond that point now. But the early chapters in Matthew and Luke cover information that is not detailed in the other Gospels, such as the genealogy of Jesus, which we covered in our first Bible study series, and Jesus' early life, which we're covering in this Bible study series. Therefore, these remaining verses in Luke chapter 2 appear to be a natural fit with this current series. At the end of our last Bible study, we left off with Jesus, Joseph, and Mary entering into the region of Galilee into a city called Nazareth. I'd like to pause here briefly and talk about what kind of city Nazareth may have been, the city where the Lord Jesus grew up. Although it does not appear that the city of Nazareth is mentioned in the Old Testament, there is information on the region of Galilee, for example, in 1 Kings. In chapter 9, we're told that Solomon gave Hiram the king of Tyre, 20 cities in the land of Galilee. And then when Hiram came to see those cities, they pleased him not. And he said, What cities are these which thou hast given me, my brother? Could this be implying that the region of Galilee may not have been that nice of a place? In the New Testament, there is a reference that people often bring up in the book of John. In chapter 1, it states, Philip findeth Nathanael, and saith unto him, we have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. When Nathanael said, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? I do not think he was just being mean, although he may have been speaking boldly and critically. In the very next verse, it states that Jesus saw Nathanael coming to him and saith of him, Behold an Israelite indeed, in whom is no guile. From Strong's Concordance, the underlying Greek word translated guile here is also translated craft, subtlety, and deceit. So it appears Jesus may be saying that Nathanael is not a crafty or deceitful person. Therefore, it appears that his comment is trustworthy. On Nathaniel's behalf, I saw some commentary that it may have been that Nathaniel was only making the point to Philip that the Messiah needed to be born out of Bethlehem and not Nazareth, and Nathaniel did not know that Jesus was born in Bethlehem. One more interesting point about Nathaniel, it appears he was actually from the same area. See, Nathaniel himself was from the region of Galilee, Cana in Galilee. This is pretty interesting to me because it may be further evidence of the humble circumstances the Lord Jesus was brought into this earth. For example, as we discussed before, after he was born, he was laid in a manger or a place where animals were normally kept. And then, as we discussed in New Testament Bible studies 12 and 13, parts 8 and 9 of this Bible study series, he may have been born into a poor family. And now it appears that he grew up in a region that may not have been very impressive and in a city that people may not have thought very much of. Okay, let's move back to the main text, rereading verse 40. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Continuing on with verse 41. Now, his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the Feast of the Passover. Let's pause here and discuss the Old Testament Mosaic Law requirement for this. See, there were three times in a year that they were required to go to Jerusalem for a feast. One was the Feast of Ingathering, also called the Feast of Tabernacles. Another was the Feast of Weeks, which is also called the Feast of Harvest. And there was also the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which is also called the Feast of the Passover. That's because they had the Lord's Passover, and then they weren't allowed to eat leavened bread for seven days. This requirement to attend three feasts per year in Jerusalem is a pretty neat thing to consider when comparing the Gospels. For example, if we were only to read the Gospels of Matthew and Mark, it would appear that Jesus 
did not even go to Jerusalem until about the time he was crucified on the cross. But here in the Gospel of Luke, we already have a couple of examples of him going to Jerusalem in his early life. And in the Gospel of John, there are other examples of him going to Jerusalem later in life. This now makes sense with this requirement known. I believe God had all four Gospels written the way that he did for his purposes. I'm only bringing this up as we compare them to get a better idea of what happened historically. Okay, let's move back to the main text. Picking back up in verse 42. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem. And Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they, supposing him to have been in the company, went a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintance. And when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. As a quick side note, notice that the journey from Jerusalem back to Nazareth is measured in days, whereas, according to the Internet, the journey from Jerusalem back to Bethlehem is only a couple of hours. So here we have Joseph and Mary beginning their journey back to Nazareth, and they didn't realize that the Lord Jesus had stayed behind in Jerusalem. And then after a day, they went and looked for him among their other family members in this caravan. And when they didn't find him, they turned around and headed back to Jerusalem. And as we'll see, it appears that they're quite worried. Picking back up with verse 46, And it came to pass that after three days they found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions, and all that heard him were astonished at his understanding and answers. And when they saw him, they were amazed, and his mother said unto him, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. And he said unto them, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? Let's stop here again for a moment. Here we have the twelve-year-old Jesus. And when they find him, he's in the temple, talking to the doctors, these really smart men. And they're astonished at his understanding and answers. And when Mary asked him about this, he says that he must be about his father's business. This is the only story that we have in the four Gospels covering this period of Jesus' life. To me, the big lesson to be learned here is that Jesus was not a man who became God, but instead, Jesus was always the Son of God. The angel Gabriel had told Mary that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And here Jesus is already referring to God as my Father. Later in John chapter 10 verse 30, Jesus further states, I and my Father are one. And in addition to Jesus clarifying his relationship with God the Father, we see here that he's astonishing everyone with his understanding and answers at the mere age of 12 years old. Picking back up with verse 50. And they understood not the saying which he spake unto them. And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was subject unto them. But his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. Among other things, here we have again another statement in the early chapters of Luke that is personal to Mary. It says here, his mother kept all these sayings in her heart. Thank you for your time. Lord willing, maybe we'll have another Bible study in the future.